Johnson & Johnson is currently at $149.54 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate it can move up to $163.02 in the next 12 months. Hey guys, today we are going to be doing the analysis on Johnson & Johnson and for those of you who watch my channel you know that the stocks that I analyze and add to the watch list I break them down into three tiers three stars is the most fundamentally sound two stars is beneath that and one star is the least fundamentally sound on the watch list but still fundamentally sound enough to make the watch list Johnson and Johnson is a three star most fundamentally sound they have an earnings report coming out on July 17th and this is just April 23rd so to me I consider that good news because that gives this stock a few months to move up and not worried about being inhibited by an earnings report an earnings report can come out and it could be a good one and the stock can really jump or it can be a bad one and the stock can really drop and since we don't really know what that is if you don't want to go in for that roller coaster ride it's good that there's some time before that earnings report comes out now notice Johnson and Johnson have been dropping we have three weeks here then green for one week and starting to move up then it dropped two weeks almost significantly and it started to drop here we see this red candle it dropped but it came back up towards the end of the week and pushed almost back up to where it started which is a good sign for those who are bullish on it and now we see this week it's green so far it's just Tuesday but it's green so far so we have some hope for this we want to see if it continues to move up goes sideways and just drops in any event Johnson & Johnson is currently at $149.54 a share Yahoo analysts estimate it can move up to $163.02 in the next 12 months so we are now going to jump into the analysis for this stock but before we do that just want to mention a couple of things and the first is that this company is coming from a weekly series that's run on the YouTube channel Uncle Dwayne's watch list this week's stock winners where we have fundamentally sound stocks at their annual low price and as they start to move up they're highlighted for the week in this week's stock winners also from this week's stock winners one particular stock is chosen for this month's option pick and not only do I tell you guys about it I actually buy it and let you guys see the progress of how it's going so there is a this week's option picks but that is actually in the patreon channel 
and the Patreon channel you will find if you go to the homepage of Uncle Dwayne's watch list, you'll see a link above to get into the Patreon channel. The Patreon channel is $25 a month, but if you join the Patreon channel, you'll also be added to a WhatsApp group so that you can receive information all the time about option picks that are being chosen and so forth. Um, whatever time it is in the day, you can receive it in WhatsApp. You'll hear the notification on your phone, whether you're at work or moving about or whatever the case is. Having said that, let's jump into the analysis for this stock. Okay, so the company name for this company, Johnson & Johnson, and the ticker symbol is JNJ. Now, I've grown up having all kinds of Johnson & Johnson products in the house. <laughs> all kinds of oils and things like that um, in the house, Johnson & Johnson products. So when we were going through that COVID time and they told us that Johnson and Johnson was one of the companies that was distributing the vaccine or shots or COVID shots or whatever we want to call them. I don't know. I was perplexed. I was saying, when did Johnson and Johnson get involved in some pharmaceuticals? But then, to my surprise, Johnson & Johnson fell to their 52-week low a little after that, not now, but previous to this. And I analyzed them. They were a fundamentally sound company. But as I did my research, I discovered that they were a legitimate pharmaceutical company with a lot of things in the pipeline. So in any event, we are going to look at the earnings per share for this company. And that was, in 2019, it was $5.63. In 2020, it was $5.51. In 2021, it was $7.81. In 2022, it was $6.73. And in 2023, it was $13.72. It really jumped up dramatically. And right now, Yahoo analysts are projecting it at $7.43. Now, sometimes that number can increase, sometimes it can drop. But even if it stays at $7.43, that's less than 2023's number but it's more than 2022 something. So, having said that, let's look at the low and high prices for this stock for each year. In 2019, they made $109.79 at their low price. $130.51 at their high price. That was an increase of 18.87% over the course of the year. 
in 2020 they made $99.70 at the low price, $144.11 at the high price. That was an increase of 44.54% over the course of the year. In 2021, they made $141.04 at the low price, $166.39 at the high price. That was an increase of 17.97% over the course of the year. In 2022, they made $149.43 at the low price, $175.77 at the high price. That was an increase of 17.63%. And in 2023, they made $143.36 at the low price, $173.66 at the high price. That was an increase of 21.14%. So, if we look at what Yahoo analysts have projected for 2024, we already know their low price has been $144.45. If they move up to the high price that Yahoo analysts project, which is $163.02, that will be an increase of 12.86% this year. Now, if we look at the PE ratios, and the reason we look at the PE ratios is because the low PE ratios for the five years can give us a probability of where this stock could fall to. In 2019, the low P was 19.50. In 2020, it was 18.09. 2021, it was 18.06. 2022, it was 22.20. And 2023, it was 10.45. Let's just look at we're not going to mess with 2023 yet. Apart from that, the lowest price or the lowest PE has been 18.06. So let's calculate 18.06 times the earnings per share, 7.43. And if we do that, what we get is that if this stock fell to a P of 18.06, it would fall to $134.18 a share at this current earnings per share. However, let's get real drastic. Let's say it fell to the PE of 10.45 again. 10.45 times 7.43 That would be a disaster. $77.64. But in any event, 
all of us are savvy investors. So we know that if we buy a company with the expectations of it moving up and it starts moving down, we're getting out of it. And we're, we may get out of it in like maybe a couple of days we'll give it. And then after that, we're out of it. But in any event, we said the low PE was 19.91. Right now, the PE is 20.13, meaning it's started moving up. Now, for those who love free cash flow yields, the free cash flow yield on this that I'm getting is 5.58. And notice I calculated it by five years of free cash flow. So the free cash flow yield I'm getting is 5.58. Now let's take a look at our income statement. In 2019, this company had $82 billion, $59 million in sales and revenue. Of that, they retained Fifteen billion, a hundred and nineteen million. That was a eighteen point forty two percent profit margin. I would say that's pretty decent, or possibly even good. In twenty twenty, and this was the COVID lockdown year. They had $82 billion, $584 million in sales and revenue. They retained $14 billion, $714 million in net income. That was a profit margin of 17.82%. Now, in 2021, it actually dropped a little they had sales and revenue of seventy-eight billion, seven hundred and forty million. Of that, after paying all expenses, they ret they retained twenty billion eight hundred and seventy-eight million. That was a twenty-six point five two percent profit margin. In twenty twenty-two. They made seventy nine billion nine hundred and ninety million in sales and revenue. Of that, they retained seventeen billion nine hundred and forty one million in net income after paying expenses. That was a twenty two point forty three percent profit margin. But in twenty twenty three, their sales and revenue jumped eighty five billion one hundred and fifty nine million of that they retained thirty five billion one hundred and fifty three million now this year that was a forty one point twenty eight percent profit margin. So, I would say their income statement looks pretty good to me. I like what I see there. If we jump down to their return on equity, 25.42% in 2019, with a 165.22% debt to equity. 23.25% in 2020, 
with 176.39% debt to equity. Twenty-eight, twenty-eight point twenty percent in twenty twenty-one, with one hundred and forty-five point eighty-nine percent debt to equity. Twenty-three point thirty-six percent in twenty twenty-two, with one hundred and forty-three point ninety-seven percent debt to equity. and 51.11% in 2023 with 143.64% debt to equity. So their return on equity is good with me. In the 20s, I find that good. Then in 2023, it jumps up in the 50s debt to equity consistently under 200. And that should speak for the balance sheet. And if we go down to the balance sheet, we see that for every year, except for 2022, the current assets exceeded the current liabilities. And if we look at total assets and total liabilities, total assets exceeded total liabilities all five years, which we want to see. Now, this company did pay dividends to their shareholders. <coughs> And in 2019, they paid $9,917,000,000 worth of, of dividends. In 2020, they paid $10,481,000,000 worth. And in 2021, they paid $11,032,000,000 worth. In 2022, they paid 11 billion 682 million worth, and in 2023, they paid 11 billion 770 million worth. Now, change in capital stock. In other words, is this company buying back shares of its own stock or selling more shares of its own stock? In this case, they're buying back more shares of their own stock, which is what we as stockholders love to see. In 2019, they bought back 5792000000 million worth. In 2020, they bought back two billion one hundred and seven million worth. In 2021, they bought back two billion four hundred and twenty million worth. In 2022, they bought back four billion seven hundred and six million year worth. 2023 was the only year where, the, in these last previous five years where they sold more shares of their stock. They sold 281 million worth. Now, we're going to jump down to our free cash flow. How much do they have at the end of the year? And free cash flow I find it significant for companies that are paying dividends because they pay the dividends from the free cash flow. So the free cash flow will let you know how much money they have left 
after paying the dividends. So I'm not going to read to you how much free cash flow this company had each year. I'm going to read to you how much free cash flow it had left after that div those dividends were paid. So in 2019, they had $13,266,000,000 left after paying the dividends. In 2020, they had 10 billion 13, 10, yeah, 10 billion 13 million left over. In 2021, they had 9 billion 437 million left over. In 2022, they had 6 billion 46 million left over. And in 2023, they had six billion eight hundred and thirty six million left over. So they can definitely afford to pay the dividends. Now having said that, what is the last dividend that this company paid out? It was a dollar nineteen for a share. And Johnson & Johnson has a book value of 28.57 for PB ratio of 5.23. They have a beta of 0 0.53. And we know the beta tells you how volatile the stock is, how much it moves. The market generally moves at a beta of 1.0. So anything higher than one is more volatile in the market. Lower than one is less volatile in the general market. So this stock would be less volatile in the general market. Now, Johnson & Johnson has 2.41 billion outstanding shares out there on the market. And of those 2.41 billion outstanding shares, 0.09% is owned by insiders, those who work in or are involved with the company. Now, 0 0.09 sounds like a very small number, but bear in mind that's 0.09% of 2.41 billion 71.18 percent is owned by large banks and institutions and this company has a dividend yield of 3.40%, current PEG ratio is 3.71. Now, Ms. Joe Ken Duato, born 1963, is the CEO and chairman, and she was, or he was appointed on January 3rd of 2022. Sorry, I said Mrs. Uh, that's Mr. Joe Quindwato. In any event, Johnson & Johnson is in the drug manufacturers, the general industry, and the healthcare sector. So, that is the analysis for Johnson & Johnson, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. And have a great night. I'll speak to you in the next video.